Okay, the next thing in the notes are some comments on trigonometric tables. And what you see here is a table of trig values. In the first column, some angles are mentioned. And then in the next columns, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of each angle. That might be kind of hard to read. Let me zoom in a bit. But you could look up on this table of values the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of these angles. Now, why do we have this? Well, let me show you something. This is a page from one of my high school math textbooks. And this is actually from my calculus book, although most of my math textbooks had page after page after page like this in the back. And these are tables of values. And you see here these are angles. This says T. That would be an angle in this column. And then the sine of the angle, the cosine of the angle, and the tangent of the angle in the other columns. And these angles here are, are actually in radians rather than in degrees. But if you needed to know the sine or cosine or tangent of, a, of an angle, you would look it up in the table. So if you wanted to know the, the tangent of 0.09, well, you would come over here and find the value. And this was sometimes a pretty cumbersome process. Because, for example, if you wanted to find, say, the cosine of 0.061, well, here's the 0.06, and you can find the cosine, and here's 0.07, and you can find the value of the cosine of 0.07. But 0.061 isn't listed here, so we would have to recognize that 0.061 is in between these two numbers, and specifically, it's 10% of the way from this number to this number. So we would have to do a little calculation and find the value that was 10% of the way from this number to this number. And we called that interpolating. And this process of interpolation was time consuming and was tedious and wasn't particularly valuable to practice. It, it was valuable in the, that it would give us the answer, but it was something we had to do over and over again. Didn't really have much educational merit to it. So having the calculator calculate these values for us is very, very nice. It saves a lot of time and a lot of effort. These pages in the back of the math book would go on and on and on. And we would have values for sine, cosine, and tangent. We had values for square roots and cube roots. We had tables for exponents and logarithms. All of these things that can be done on the calculator today, we had to look up in tables in the back of the book. So when you see these tables of trig values, and imagine having to look up the number in a table every time you needed to find a value, and perhaps interpolate in between numbers to get that value accurately. Hopefully you can appreciate what you have in a modern calculator with the ability to compute all of those values to a large number of decimal places very quickly on demand. And these trig tables originally had to be computed without a calculator. Remember Hipparchus? We talked about Hipparchus back at the beginning. There's a picture of Hipparchus, Greek mathematician from the second century BC, over 2,000 years ago. As far as we know, he was the first person to compute and use tables of trigonometric values. And for that reason, Hipparchus is sometimes called the father of trigonometry.